Oh, okay. As long as he can beat him. Thank 
Patrick and Kelly Dale and, and Bob and Brent and Nicole. So a couple of past few notes uh, regarding the uh, seniors banquet last night. I said a uh, big thank you to all who made the Valentine's banquet a special night for us all. The young people were great hostesses and hosts. Food was delicious. And I said love you all. Russell and Sue that Tyndall. And then we have one that's been signed by several people. And I thank everybody else. It says, uh, to the youth of the New Boston Church of Christ, thank you so much for the wonderful dinner you provided this past Saturday, last night. The meal was delightful with the congregation, the Christian love of the seniors uh, of the New Boston Church of Christ. Um, if there are any other announcements, we can continue with our conference.
Sunday evening services, especially those who are visiting with us. And we have some visitors this evening, and we encourage you to stick around a little bit and say hi to everyone here. And we appreciate you coming out to see us this evening. Well, as we just sung in this song tonight, we're going to look at the song, Live for Jesus. And as we think about this particular song, this is a great message that we have in the Scriptures. First of all, let's think about 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 15, which is the premise for the song, Live for Jesus. It says, And he died for all that those who live should live no longer to themselves or for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again, live for Jesus. What a tremendous spiritual thought that is a scriptural thought. This song in our songbook, Live for Jesus, has a great message. Well, one of the things that we're striving to do when we sing is not only to uh, sing with the Spirit, but to sing with the understanding also. We, as we sing these great songs in our hymn books, should be thinking about the message of the words that are in there as well as the attitude that the song conveys. First Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 15 says, I will sing with the Spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. So let's look at this song, Live for Jesus. You can open your song books to song number 594 if you'd like. And as we're going through, we can look at these lyrics together. And then we'll also have a few scriptures to lay alongside of them to uh, prompt our thinking in regard to the message of this song. First of all, to live for Jesus means being an all-in disciple. An all-in disciple. Live for Jesus, O oh my brother, his disciple ever be. Render not to any other what alone the Lord's should be. And so the idea, the concept of, of being a disciple of Jesus at all times is something that this song is seeking to teach us. So we need to be an all-in disciple. You know, Jesus wants faithful disciples. Think about when he called the disciples, the apostles. They were out there fishing, you know. And, and Jesus looked at them and he said, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they immediately left their nets and followed him. Matthew chapter 4, verses 19 through 20. This story is an example then of the kind of discipleship that Jesus is looking for. Here were men who were willing to leave everything they had and then to go after Jesus and to follow Him and to be His disciples. They were all in disciples. The word disciple means a follower or a learner. Someone who is uh, then going to pursue the teachings of one whom they consider to be their teacher. Jesus Christ is our teacher. And so we are his disciples in the sense that we are to follow his teachings. When we think about being an all-in disciple, there were a couple of people who wanted to be Jesus' disciples, but then he had challenged, some challenging things to say to them. Matthew chapter 8, verses 19 through 22, a certain scribe came and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their own dead. Great challenging words given to these who would uh, purport to be Jesus' disciples. Why did Jesus say these things to them. Evidently, they were not being all-in disciples. They were holding themselves back from being all-in disciples of Jesus. On the one hand, you had the one who was challenged by the idea that he wasn't going to have a comfortable place to sleep or a comfortable place to reside. On the other hand, you have one whose family is taking 
priority over Jesus. And both of these things Jesus said were hindrances in the lives of these individuals to being disciples. What about us? Are we disciples of Jesus? Are we going to put all hindrances aside and live for Jesus? That is the question. To live for Jesus means being an all-in disciple. And Jesus wants us to make other disciples. And as we think about making other disciples, Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20 comes through mind. For Jesus says, go into all the world and make disciples of all the nations. Being an all-in disciple means living faithfully for Him, but it means giving yourself to things uh, that are of God and not of man. And as we think about what Jesus' teaching is along those lines, you know, there was this one time when Herodians came to Jesus and showed Him a coin, and, and on the coin uh, was a picture of Caesar, and, and the question was... Uh, you know, are we going to pay taxes to Caesar? And Jesus said, show me the money, the, the tax money. And they showed him a coin, maybe similar to this one right here. And his answer, render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And one of the lines in the song is, render not to any other what alone the Lord's should be. Well, here Jesus says, we're supposed to give to God what is God's, and the question is then, what belongs to God? Well, that tax money with Caesar's face on it, that can go to Caesar, that's fine. But who then belongs to God? It's you and I who belong to God. And so therefore, we're supposed to give ourselves to God. Remember what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verses 19-20? Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You see, we belong to God. Give to Caesar what is Caesar, but give to God what is God and God's. And who belongs to God? We do. And so we need to live for Jesus. By giving ourselves to Him. Living for Jesus means being an all-in disciple. His disciple ever be. And render not to any other, but alone the Lord's should be. But then, living for Jesus means we have an amazing or awesome a destiny. Think about what the psalm says next. Live for Jesus, wandering sinner. Under Satan, serve no more. Of the promised prize, a winner, thou mayst be when life is o'er. This picture that we have up here shows a prize winner. You'll notice the laurel crown that's on his head. It's made of gold leaf. This was the prize that was given to those who won the various games that were held in the time of the first century, such as the Olympic Games or the Isthmian Games. And we have a prize to win also as Christians. And that prize is something that we need to be striving for each and every day as we live for Jesus. Of course, first of all, we've got to understand that we can't serve Satan anymore if we want to win this prize. Satan is in the scriptures is described as that roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. And Satan has some tools that he then uses to try to get us to ascend and to leave the faith. What are those tools? They are the three things that John describes in 1 John 2, verses 15 through 17, where he says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. The world is passing away, and the lusts of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Under Satan serve no more. What does that mean? It means we've got to be aware 
that Satan is trying to take us away from God and from Christ. And it also means we need to be aware of the tools that he's using. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And all three of those things are things that Satan uses to uh, get us to fall away from the truth and commit sin within our life. But as those who are living for Jesus, under Satan we are serving no more. That means we're not going to uh, be ignorant of his devices, as the Apostle Paul says, but instead we're going to keep our eyes open for these temptations when they come our way. And then the second part of that stanza says, If the promised prize a winner, thou mayst be when life is o'er. In other words, you may be the winner of the promised prize when life ends. And what is that promised prize? It is that awesome destiny that we talked about earlier. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 through 14, the Apostle Paul says this, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The prize of the upward call of God. What that prize, there it is, it's described again in the scriptures as a prize. The promised prize. That prize is also talked about here in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verses 24 through 27, which verses describe, that scholars believe, the Isthmian Games. <laughs> we talked about the two different kinds of games, the were Olympic Games, and then there were the Isthmian Games. Maybe you've never heard of the Isthmian Games. Well, those were the games that were held in Corinth. The Olympic Games were held uh, in the Grecian mainland, the Isthmian Games were held on the, the isthmus uh, that connected the area of Corinth with the rest of Greece. And so an isthmus is what we call a land bridge. And that then connects the rest of Greece with this uh, separated part on which Corinth was. And they would have different kind of games there. They would have running games. They would have boxing games. And they would have other games. But notice, notice the games that Paul describes. He says, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown. But we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. And so there are some things that one needs to do in order to win that prize. We've got to compete, which means we've got to enter the contest. Well, if you become a Christian, then you have entered that contest. We've got to uh, do the things in order to compete lawfully. We run, not with uncertainty, but as one who's trying to win. We you know, fight, not as a box in the air, but as one who's really competing. And we bring our body into subjection. We discipline it. And Paul is talking about spiritual matters here, of course. He's not talking about physical things. But in that regard, then, we bring our body into discipline so that we can live for Jesus. We can put away the things, the temptations that Satan puts in our way. And that we can live the kind of life that God wants us to live. And so run in such a way that you may obtain the prize. In other words, give it all you've got. Live for Jesus, wandering sinner. Under Satan, serve no more. Of the promised prize, a winner thou must be when life is for. And that promised prize is the amazing destiny that we have in Christ Jesus. And that is, of course, the promise of heaven and the promise of eternal life 
We're going to talk a little bit more about that in the third point here, which is when we live for Jesus, we need to do it all the time, all day, follow Him all day. Live for Jesus in life's morning. At the noontide hour will be His. And at eve, when day is turning, and inherit endless bliss. And so here is the third stanza of the song that we sang right before the lesson this evening. And this third stanza then encourages us to live all day long, in the morning, at noon, and at evening. And we need to live for Jesus all the time. We want to live for Jesus at every moment of the day. Look at these scriptures that talk about following Jesus on a daily basis. Then he said to them, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Daily we are to take up our cross so as to be a disciple of Jesus. Notice Acts 5 verse 42, And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. It reminds me of Deuteronomy chapter 6, where Moses tells the children of Israel to uh, tell the children, you know, in the morning, when they rise up in the morning, when they go to bed at night, bind it on their foreheads, put it, strap it onto their wrists, the word that God has given you, so that they will remember it daily. They did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. And Hebrews 3 verse 13 says, But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Christianity is a daily religion. It is something that we practice all the time. I'm a Christian when I get up in the morning. I'm a Christian when I eat breakfast. I'm a Christian on the way to work. I'm a Christian when I'm at work. I'm a Christian when I sit down for lunch. I'm a Christian in the afternoon. I'm a Christian when I come home to my family. I'm a Christian when I eat dinner. I'm a Christian when I am uh, with my family in the evening. And I'm a Christian when I go to bed at night. And that same pattern repeats every single day. And we are Christians at all hours of the day. And that's how we are to live our life. Live for Jesus. Live for Jesus all day. Notice also in uh, continuing this thought that when we have no more days to live, as the psalm says, endless bliss in heaven with God awaits. Matthew chapter 25, verse 34, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. This is the promise that Jesus gives to those who then live for Him. You remember what He said in that context about those who are living for, for Him. He said, I was sick and in prison and you came to me. I uh, was uh, alone and you visited me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was hungry and you fed me. All of those things are things that Jesus notes of our living on a daily basis for him. And it's those who did it for the right reasons are those then who will inherit the kingdom prepared for you for the foundation of the world. And Jesus said this in that context. He said, Inasmuch as, as you did it unto the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. And so by serving one another, we are serving Jesus. And of course, God has prepared for us a wonderful place, a glorious place, Romans 9, verse 23, that He might make known the riches of His glory on the vessels of mercy which He had prepared before Him for glory. Live for Jesus and inherit endless bliss. Living so that we can be in glory. Consider also finally Romans chapter 8, in verse 18, the Apostle Paul says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. What a tremendous thought. Yes, we have challenges on a daily basis. There are problems that we must work through. 
There are difficulties, struggles, trials. But when this life is over, and all those trials and struggles and difficulties and problems are behind us, when we get to heaven, it's going to be as if those things hardly ever existed. I know that's difficult for us to imagine right now because we're in the midst of it. You know, we're in the thick of it, you know. And that's, it's hard. But just think, one day, it's all going to be worth it. Live for Jesus and inherit endless bliss. Living for Jesus means being an all-in disciple. Living for Jesus means having an amazing destiny. Living for Jesus means following Him all day. Live for Jesus, oh my brother. His disciple ever be. Render not to any other what alone the Lord's should be. Be an all-in disciple. Live for Jesus, wandering sinner under Satan. Serve no more of the promised prize of winner. Thou mayst be when life is o'er. Live for Jesus and have an amazing destiny. Live for Jesus in life's morning. At the noontime hour be His. And at eve when day is turning. And inherit endless bliss. Live for Jesus all day long. Live for Jesus. Live for Jesus. Give Him all thou hast to give. On the cross, the world's Redeemer gave His life that thou Life's live. What an amazing thought that is then that Jesus gave His life for us that we might have life both now and in eternity. Maybe there's someone here tonight who needs to begin living for Jesus and you would like to take advantage of the great offer that God has given to us through Jesus. You know, God commends His own love toward us and that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans chapter 5 tells us. And yet, in that death, He paid the price for our sins so that we wouldn't have to be separated from God eternally, but to be forgiven. Jesus gave His life on the cross so that we could then have life. What a beautiful thought that is. And then what a great life when we have the opportunity to render to Jesus each day. And every day. You need to become a child of God. From hearing the word of God, believing it, repenting of your sins, confessing Jesus as Lord, and being baptized for the forgiveness of sins, you can then become a Christian this very evening. Maybe there's someone here who would like to do that tonight. Or maybe you would like the prayers of the church because, frankly, you haven't been living for Jesus as He wants you to live for Him. We all need prayer each and every day to do better than we have, but there may be one who has a special need in that regard. And if that is your desire, then this evening you can come forward and make that request known, and, and we'll pray with you and for you so that you can live for Jesus each and every day of your life. Whatever your need may be this evening, uh, we certainly want to help you in that regard so that we can live for Jesus each and every day. And if you would like to come now, we invite you to do so while together we stand and while we sing.
forgiveness and most of all for the Son of Jesus to die on the cross for us. And thank you for letting us be here to worship you today. And we ask that you be with those who are sick and who are suffering and those who are less fortunate and those who aren't able to come and, and worship you in freedom. And dear Lord, we ask that you keep those who are traveling and have a safe trip where the destination may be to bring us all back to the next 20 time. In your Son of Jesus, name we pray. Amen.